Hi and welcome to another Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series video. Today we're going to be looking at the RKI GX6000 unit. And this is a 4 gas plus PID, so we've got the two cylinders of CalGas. Let's go ahead and get it started up. Press and hold the power button until you hear the beep. And then once it beeps and lights up, you can release that. And it'll go through a warm-up mode. And it's going to go through, say, when the next Cal date is, as well as what the alarm limits are in the unit and the date and time. So, while this is starting up, we're going to take our gas here, we're going to get it prepared. You can see this is a 25 part per million hydrogen sulfide, 50 part per million carbon monoxide, 50% LEL methane, and 12% oxygen mix. That's the RKI standard mix. And then on this side over here for the PID sensor, we have an isobutylene at 100 parts per million with an air balance. And you can see these cylinders are different sizes. This is a 34 liter cylinder here, and this is a 58 liter cylinder here. You also see our regulator we're using as a demand flow regulator. This turns on when there's pump, so when you attach the pump line to this, it'll open the valve and flow gas so that it matches the pump exactly. And it has a C10 fitting on the bottom, and that's the standard for these cylinders. So let's get these all screwed in. There's no valve on these, so you don't need to open the valve when you screw them in. You just screw it right in. And check, make sure you have pressure on the cylinders. And now we're going to attach our tubing to the monitor. It can be a little tight, as long as you got to wiggle it, but... Kind of bend it down there. And sometimes if you run into a problem like this where the tubing isn't fitting, you can find other sizes of the tubing. Which is what I'm grabbing right now. There we go. So that's a little bit a little bit better. And now we've got our tube line here that'll go on the regulator. So first things first, we're gonna zero the unit out. We're gonna do that, we're gonna press and hold this button here, the air button and it'll say keep holding and release the key now. This unit's really easy to zero which is great. Okay, it's done. It'll go back to normal reading mode now. And now we're going to set it up for calibration. To do that you're going to hold shift with your right thumb and then press display lock and it'll put you into cal mode. So you can do the air cal, that's the same as holding this button. And we also have the auto cal and the single cal mode and then normal mode takes you back to the start. So we're going to go down, we're going to go to Auto Cal, hit Enter. And now we're going to hit Enter for concentration. And it shows us here we have 50% LEL, 12% oxygen, 25% parts per million hydrogen sulfide, 50 parts per million carbon monoxide, and 100 parts per million on isobutylene. And so this here, if we wanted to change it, this would be the menu that you go in to do so. Now go to gas select. This is going to tell us which gas we're going to choose. So press enter here. And now it will blink the values saying which what we're going to be calibrating. So you just attach this here to this line. Now this goes right on a regulator and it will immediately begin pulling gas. You can see it over here that it's reading the values. And this is what it's reading currently. So this will change as it calibrates. Uh, you'll see some of the values may be high, some may be low over time, just depending on what the monitor is seen out in the field. But this will take a minute. And then it will calibrate as long as these numbers are within value. So if you see here, you can see this one's reading 18 and a half, so it's reading a little bit low right now. Uh, you can see these ones are a little bit closer. CO is also low, it's reading 38. So once it's stabilized, once everything is all set, so you see it's not moving a whole lot anymore. Now we're going to press enter. And you can see it brought the numbers up to what they should read. Okay, now take your tubing off the other monitor. And now it's going to take you back. We want to go to gas select, press enter. And now this isn't the one we want to do right now, so we're going to hit down, and that's going to take us to our VOC. Okay, we're going to press enter here. 
and it says isobutylene, isobutylene, that's fine. I'm gonna hit enter and put the gas on. Okay. Now the same thing, you can see we have the reading showing here. And we're, what we're waiting for is this to stabilize. So it generally takes about a minute, minute and a half or so. Uh, PID sensors are actually very, very quick, so this might well take less than that. Uh, they, they tend to have a very, very fast T90 time. And T90 time is the time it takes to read 90% of the gas that's in the room present. So we're at 96.8 right now. I'm just going to see if it'll stay there. 97. This will happen. You just kind of got to wait for it to uh, stabilize out. And then once it does, you're okay. Good deal. So it slowed down quite a bit. It seems like it's plateaued. It's right, reading right around 97.3, 97.4. And as soon as you say that, you get a 97.5. That looks good, that's holding pretty stable. We're gonna hit the enter button. Good deal. Now that's passed, we'll take that off. And we are done with our calibration. We're gonna go down to escape. We're gonna go down to normal mode. And then we're gonna let the unit drop back down. Perfect. So that's that's looking good. Seeing uh, a small decimal point worth of VOCs isn't much, as long as you get that latent in the air anyway. So this monitor is in good shape. If we were going to run a bump test on this unit, the way to do it is you take the unit once it's in normal reading mode, and we're just going to check the values. So to do that, you just take your gas tubing. We're going to start with 4 gas. I generally recommend starting with 4 gas because the carbon monoxide sensor is a little sensitive to isobutylene on some units. can be over time. And we want to, we're going to do this one first so that it doesn't affect the sensor. So, a bump test is real quick and easy. All we're going to do to do a qualitative bump check is make sure that these sensors are reading properly. So to do that, all you do is take your tubing, put it on the top, and we're going to send the unit into alarm. So we can hear the siren, we can see the flashers, and I can feel the vibrating alarm. The sensors are all moving towards their intended destination. That's all you need. So then we hit the reset real quick to save our eardrums. And actually, I took that off. The wrong piece there. Let's put this back on here. So now we saw that all four of these sensors are operating. The next one we're going to check is the PID. Excuse me. So, see how this is alarming now? This is in a latched alarm state. So what you want to do is hit the reset button, and now it's back to normal. So it does that in case you're in the field, you get a high range on the alarm, and then if you, maybe you didn't notice or someone wasn't around, it stays in alarm, that way you know you had that, you had that peak. So now we're going to do the PID. Same procedure here. Put the gas on. Alarms. Take it off. We don't need to check and make sure that this value matches what's on the cylinder. We're, all we're checking is that the unit saw the gas there. Okay, perfect. And this is back down to zero, and everything is stabilized. All right, there's one more check you want to do before you go in the field each day, and that is a pump check. So what you want to do is you want to take your line your, here and... When you start it up, it's good to check the pump independently, so I just do it like this. Wait for the alarm, fills low flow, good. That means the pump's working properly, there's no leaks internally. Once you have your tubing set up that you're going to do a sample, you want to put everything together, and then at the very end of your sample line, doesn't matter if it's 10 feet, 25 feet, whatever it is, at the very end, you want to take your thumb and just put it over the end of your line. It might take a couple seconds to fail, this is pretty quick because it's a short path. But you want to do that check every day before you go into the field to make sure that there's no leaks. Because if there's leaks, they'll dilute your sample, and then you won't know what's in the room. 
Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to call us. Uh, and please, if you're buying calibration gas or regulators or need any parts, you know, feel free to call us for that as well. Our number here is 734-956-0539, and our website is idealcalibrations.com. And if you email in for support, you email support at idealcalibrations.com. You guys stay safe out there.